following is an address to the nation by Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, Prime Minister and Minister for Public Administration, Home Affairs, National Security, Youth Development, Disaster Management, and ICT. Fellow Grenadians, during the past two weeks, we have witnessed the realization of our worst fears. After successfully keeping COVID-19 at bay for much of the past 18 months with our stringent border protocols, the COVID-19 virus is now spreading rapidly among Grenadians. Up till now, we have had front row seats as the drama unfolded in countries near and far. But now, our country, our people, our closest relatives and dear friends, I am in this unrelenting odyssey that has brought death and suffering to so many people around the world. This week, four families were thrust into mourning in our country as they lost loved ones to COVID-19. Despite the best efforts of the medical team to administer treatment after they were hospitalized for care, relating to the positive diagnosis and the underlying medical conditions. Tonight, I extend the deepest condolences to the family and friends of the deceased. And I pray that the Lord strengthens all of you in your time of grief. My friends, my dear sisters and brothers all, this is the sad reality of COVID-19 pandemic. It comes not like a thief in the night, but like an acquaintance who befriends you, then slowly, or in some cases, rapidly begins to take control of your life smothering the air that you breathe and leaving you lifeless, harsh, but real. Thankfully, our hard-working healthcare team has managed us far to successfully treat and discharge the majority of COVID-19 patients with increased hospitalizations and persons presented with more severe symptoms, we pray for their continued ability to save lives. And we thank them all. The COVID-19 situation in our country has deteriorated rapidly in recent weeks. Daily statistics from the Ministry of Health show that we have moved from the occasional identification of positive cases to daily additions of new cases, sometimes in excess of 100 per day. The medical experts have confirmed that we are now at the stage of community spread. The number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 is now nearing 1,000, with more than 600 active cases. There is no telling where the next case will be recorded. It could be you. It could be me, 
could be a beloved family member or a friend. Sisters and brothers all, we are all at risk. In light of the recent developments and in furtherance of the containment measures previously announced, the curfew will be implemented from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily, effective September 4th, tomorrow. There will be no inter-island travel between Grenada, Karakou, and P.T. Martinique during that time. Anyone permitted through exemption to travel between the islands must take a rapid antigen test before departure. The Morris Bishop International Airport and the commercial ports of entry will remain open. Government is continuing to examine the entry protocols relative to the quarantine period but it must be appreciated that any decision taken will require advance notice to travel stakeholders and holiday seekers. This we will give in due course. The situation we now face, sisters and brothers, is dire. And clearly, it cannot I have, been, I have been constantly saying, be business as usual. While there will be continuity of operations in some sectors, including the public service, statutory bodies, and state-owned enterprises, manufacturing, construction, wholesale and retail grocery stores, banking, transportation, agriculture, and fisheries, it has become necessary to implement closures in non-essential sectors to help limit the movement of people and to curb the spread of the virus. Sisters and brothers, fellow Grenadians, closures will include daycare centers, saloons, barber shops, gyms, and other indoor entertainment facilities. Schools will offer virtual classes only. St. George's University will continue operations with strict adherence to the protocols that all other entities that continue to exist will have to live with. Doctors, dentists, veterinarians, accountants, lawyers, and insurance companies are also permitted to operate by appointment only. Pharmacies and hardware stores remain open for pickup and delivery services only during that period. All social activities, sporting events, and weddings have been suspended also. Funerals are permitted but are restricted to one hour between the hours of 9 a.m. to noon. Beach access is limited to 5 to 10 o'clock a.m. daily. Sadly, the debushing program which created thousands of jobs for daily paid workers across the country will be suspended for two weeks starting Monday. September 6th. We recognize that this will be a hard-hitting measure 
for some of our most vulnerable citizens. But it is one that has become absolutely necessary. Additionally, no movement days will be enforced from 5 p.m. on Friday, September 10th next week to 5 a.m. on Monday 13th of September. And again from Friday 17th of September to Monday 20th of September. During these non-movement days, the Ministry of Health will facilitate greater access to testing and vaccination within communities. That must continue. No movement will be permitted except for purposes of testing and vaccination during those weekends. The full list of updated regulations will be shared after this address, and regularly so. These measures, sisters and brothers, will remain in place for the next two weeks in the first instance. However, the pandemic remains flowing, and we will continue to review response mechanism and make the necessary adjustments. Decisions of how we go forward would be left to be dependent on the behavior of all of us to control this dreaded disease. The pandemic has presented a steep learning curve for countries all over the world. In the past 18 months, we have learned valuable lessons from the actions taken, modifying where necessary to maintain the public health and safety objectives. Therefore, our containment strategy has evolved to ensure that we protect our fragile fiscal position through continued economic activity while safeguarding the continued physical, mental, and emotional well-being of all our citizens. Government therefore applauds the announcement by the religious community to resort to virtual services for the next two weeks. We welcome this initiative and the ongoing collaboration with critical stakeholders. I want to express gratitude too to members of the business community and the trade union movement who have been engaged this week in consultation with government, examining strategic moves to deal with this serious crisis. Sisters and brothers, I urge that you continue to appropriately guide your membership going forward. Effectively dealing with this pandemic requires us to have all hands on deck. And government welcomes all the support of strategic partnerships. Sisters and brothers, although our borders remain open, the current rate of infections could negatively impact travelers wishing to visit our country. Grenada is now on the UK's green watch list meaning that we are at risk of being moved to amber list which stipulates quarantine measures for the returning nationals. A deterrent to leisure travel that will affect visitor arrivals and further impact the hospitality sector. Additionally, 
Grenada could lose its coveted level one rating by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the United States. I want to remind all of us that as citizens, we have the power to stop COVID-19. We can control it through responsible actions, restricting our own movements, wearing a mask properly, or appropriately face coverings in public spaces, maintaining our physical distance and washing or sanitizing our hands frequently. Easy steps, which if followed consistently by everyone, can immediately stem the current trend and have could have been prevented us from being where we are today. This basic protocol could ultimately mean the difference between life and death as they help to protect you from contracting the virus. As a responsible citizen of this country, I have been doing my part and I'm prepared to continue doing so. Are you? The time will come for us to do a deep dive. A thorough analysis of Grenada's COVID experiences and other issues. For now, our priority must be on achieving absolute unity in the fight against this unseen enemy. Our energies must be singularly focused on navigating through the current crisis. And I cannot stress enough the importance of doing so collectively. I therefore call on all leaders within our country, churches, businesses, trade unionists, politicians, sports persons, cultural artists, social media and media influencers, just about everyone who has a sphere of influence over any sector of the society. Let us please put aside personal and organizational differences and join hands in working towards promoting and achieving the behavioral change that will ultimately protect our people. We have a moral responsibility to do this. COVID-19 is no respect of class or affiliation. As it goes looking through our communities, finding refuge as it travels indiscriminately from one body to the next, it poses a threat to all of us, a clear and present danger to the healthy, wealthy, and the most vulnerable. But in the midst of the threat, a pathway is illuminated, created by a mix of individual and shared responsibility. My friends all, this crisis is not insurmountable. As a people, we are battle-tested and resilient. We can and we will get through this, but we will do so together. I reiterate it here, the appeal made for volunteers to help to support the work of the Ministry of Health as it undertakes surveillance and vaccination efforts throughout the country. Sisters and brothers all, help us to help you. And together, we will help all Grenada, Caracu, and Pretty Martinique. The pandemic has created a financial and em em emotional roller coaster, straining the human spirit to the breaking point, and government has been affected accordingly. 
The fatigue is inescapable. But our frontline team continues to deliver daily and tonight. I salute all of them for the human service being provided in healthcare, national security, and other areas of critical importance. My thoughts and prayers are with all of you as you continue to execute your duties during these very difficult times. I acknowledge here the current challenges facing the Royal Grenada Police Force as it deals with the impact of COVID-19 among its ranks. We wish those affected a speedy recovery and assure you of government's full support. At Her Majesty's Prison, we recognize the commitment and the agility of the management team to maintaining the recommended protocols, particularly as it relates to the intake procedures and quickly arresting the potential outbreak. In closing, sisters and brothers, I encourage everyone to strive as best as possible to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Do your regular health checks. I have just done mine, and thankfully, I have been given a clean bill of health. Maintain a healthy diet, using the wide variety of organic products available here in our country to boost in your immunity with daily supplements. And of course, engage in regular exercise. Now more than ever, a healthy you is critically important. And finally, sisters and brothers, I pray for God's continued guidance. I pray that his enduring mercies are bestowed on this nation, on its people. Stay safe, everyone. Be COVID smart. Protect yourselves and your loved ones. I thank you all. The preceding was an address to the nation by Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, Prime Minister and Minister for Public Administration, Home Affairs, National Security, Youth Development, Disaster Management, and ICT.